and uh, will also influence other processes that are associated with two particles in a more specific way, for example, two particle knockout reaction or two particle breakup reaction in uh, Borromean nuclei. And uh, it's clear that there is an influence of the pairing correlation, but how to make it quantitative? That is the serious problem. It's a serious problem because uh, 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 other direct reactions are much more simpler from a reaction point of view. For example, if you do Coulomb excitation, in a certain limit, uh, uh, Coulomb cross-section becomes directly proportional to the V lambda. In that case, it's trivial to extract information from, from a reaction point of view. But in the case of two nucleon transfer reaction, the mechanism is uh, obviously more complicated, and the process of extracting information is not uh, so simple. Uh, Sometimes, uh, in a simplest way, one is simply putting that uh, the cross-section for two-particle transfer just scale with the matrix element of the two-particle creation of electron. And uh, this is not an obvious uh, statement. Uh, because uh, I presume that the radial dependence of the transition density contains more information than what you get by integrating the two-particle transition density. Uh, where is it uh, hidden, this, uh, this information? Um, uh, again, uh, when one is talking about enhancement due to the to the pair interaction, uh, a way, a traditional way of defining uh, the collectivity, the dynamical collectivity of the pairing mode, is to compare uh, the single particle pair transition density with what you get with the matrix element with a correlated wave function uh, in the sort of uh, Weisskopf units for inelastic, uh, inelastic excitation. For B lambda. This is a, a, just an example of a two particle response to, in this case, lead to weight. And we look to the matrix element between the ground state of lead to weight and all the zero plus state in lead to a 10. And the structure of the state in 2 or 10 are obtained either from the shell, pure shell model, and that's the black, uh, black line, black uh, result either in uh, more sophisticated, uh, we just did in this case RPA calculation, and you can see how the correlation induced by the RPA is enhancing the pair strength to the ground state. So in this case, from a theoretical point of view, you would call enhancement due to the pairing the ratio between uh, the strength, correlated strength, and the, let's say, amplitude of the strength. Another example, if you now approach the drip line, this is oxygen 22. Again, you can calculate in uh, artery fog volume for plus uh, QRPA, the two particle response. And again, you can compare the, uh, let's call, unperturbed response with the perturbed response. And the announcement that you obtain is what you uh, say is due, is the effect of the pair interaction. Uh, the same thing, uh, the thing is even more complicated in the case of, uh, of uh, models that do not explicitly contain uh, the fermion, the case of freedom. Uh, for example, within the IBM, uh, you have to, to find a mapping procedure between uh, your fermion Hidaga Hidaga operator and uh, a certain uh, form of your, of your operator. It's clear that in this way, it, it, the model does not provide absolute values. You can only provide the relative intensities. But for example, uh, we have been using that for studying signature of pair transition, of phase transition. For example, uh, going from uh, U5 to SU3, and uh, looking at the transition from all the ground state, then you, you can get clearly a, a discontinuity 
in correspondence of the phase transition and uh, the, not only for transition to the ground state but also transition to, to, the, excited, to the first excited state. In this case you see that at the phase transition there is a strong uh, population of the beta of the beta band and uh, the same thing you see, can see maybe better uh, in the fragmentation of the pair strength in correspondence to the phase transition. In this case, the phase transition was uh, produced around nine, between eight and nine bosons, and then you could see that uh, in correspondence of the phase transition, the pair strength breaks into, into fragmented. It's fragmented. Uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, the two-particle transfer process, however, is not sensitive just to the pair matrix element because we have to look at the radial dependence, which is obviously relevant uh, uh, in the reaction mechanism because your reaction mechanism is happening in space and uh, the two-particle transfer happens at certain distance from the system and so Two-particle transfer is not testing the global two-particle matrix element, but is testing the pair transition density in specific point of the space. Uh, uh, for example, uh, test again uh, the transition density, particle-particle uh, transition density from lead to a 10 to lead to lead from lead to a 8 to lead to a 10. As a function of R, and that you compare the figure with the. That is a. So you can see the uh, two particle transition density for a pure G9 R square uh, transition compared with what you get from a correlated. State. So you can see an enhancement of the, of the two-particle transition density, but this enhancement is not the same in any point. So it's not obvious how to extract a unique fact enhancement, enhancement factor. Okay. The same thing you can look at uh, by looking, for example, you take the wave function of the two-particle and then you plot the, the, uh, the two-particle wave function as a function of the center of mass distance r and the relative distance small r. If your two particles are in a single particle orbit, then you get equal probability of having capital r or small r. But if you put correlation, then the correlation tends to clusterize the two particles and moving it to smaller value of small r and larger value of r. So, there is no doubt that the pairing correlation is, uh, as we always say, working in a, uh, not in radial space, but it is creating a correlation in space among the two, among the two particles. Yeah, the same thing was shown, for example, in the case of helium 6. Uh, this is again the plot uh, of uh, capital R and small r of the two neutrons outside alpha to create uh, helium-6. And you see that this figure is not symmetric, and this more means that uh, uh, this, this uh, configuration is preferred with respect to the CR configuration with the two particles, one on one side, one on the other. On the other. Okay. Now, a first example of uh, dynamical effect uh, of particle-particle uh, -particle correlation of dynamics can be seen, for example, in the uh, process of two-particle breakup uh, in polomian nuclei. Polomian nuclei are those in which you have two particles which are uh, uh, outside the core. One particle outside the core is not bound and the correlation between the two particles make them bound. Now, the breakup process is produced by the action of the external one body field. So the, the breakup is acting on one particle, but nonetheless, uh, there must be something, 
that uh, take into account the fact that the two particles are correlated. Okay? We made a simple uh, calculation by using a one-dimensional free body model. We take two particles which are bound by a potential and which are uh, creating a bound state due to a interaction between the two particles. We took a density dependent interaction between the two particles. Okay? And then uh, we uh, this creates a ground state. Uh, uh, you can see that two, this is the position of particle one and position of particle two. If you don't put correlation, you have equal probability of finding the two particles on the same size or opposite size. But if you put correlation, you have more probability of finding the two particles.